Hey guys, welcome to the Bourbon and College YouTube channel. I'm Austin. Let's get started. So, we're on to the semifinals. In the first matchup of the uh, semifinal round of the bottom shelf bracket battle, getting better at it. First matchup, we have Canadian Crown Royal versus American Evan Williams Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Um, these rounds, it's going to be obvious which one's which, so I might as well just show you and me ahead of time. So this is going to be our Crown Royal over here. Not much. <laughs> now, obviously the winner of this goes to the final. The final will be a full review of both bourbons. I'll do a full review, keep replace on both of them, and then I'll announce the winner. But for this, still just going to stick with pretty quick. So here we go. Now it's been over a week since I've done this. So I've kind of, you know, reset everything. I haven't had any of these bourbons since, or excuse me, whiskey scent. Hmm. Very light. Not much on there. Almost a licorice. <clears throat> hmm. A little heavier. A little heavier on the uh, barrel notes. Not much. A little bit of licorice in there too, but mainly your classic vanilla and caramel, like I always say for a bourbon. Hmm. Both easy. These are both 40. This one's 40%. And this is. 43% ABV. <clears throat> All right, let's try the taste. Mm. Very sweet, very light. It tastes almost, it's more, burp, just this being the first whiskey I've had today. It's a little more bourbonish than I remember it. Smooth, like it says on the bottle, definitely easy to drink. Hmm. Reset my nose. Let's see what we got here. Hmm. They're actually very similar, honestly. This not being a bourbon, still very similar. And I don't know the mash bill at all on Crown Royal. I know they have a bourbon mash, which I have up here. This is the Crown Royal bourbon mash, which is a bourbon mash bill, but not bourbon because it's made in Canada. But the similar, this has a little more complexity though. They're so similar. They've given them to me blind. I would call the Crown Royal bourbon. A, you know, lower proof, weak, but definitely a bourbon. <clears throat> Crown, I mean, sorry, Evan Williams just has a little more complexity in it. A little more than just the basic baseline sweet notes. Mm. And for whatever reason, if this is the first round you're watching, this is the regular Evan Williams black label. It's just relabeled. It's the same juice inside. So that is what I'm trying. This is your regular Crown Royal in a small plastic bottle. All right. So winner of this round. Maybe it's just because I'm a bourbon guy, but I'm going with Evan Williams. Kentucky's first distiller. Evan Williams. Let's match up one. Put this back. Match up two is is a uh, Jim Beam repeal batch and everyone's favorite underdog, Monkey Shoulder. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time you've been waiting for. Second match of the semifinal round, we have Jim Beam repeal batch, which has been called one of the best budget bourbons because it's so interesting and being the repeal batch, being the uh, unchill filtered, kind of weird, 43% ABV, Jim Beam product. 
over here in this glass. That's what we got there. And everybody's favorite underdog, the scotch of the group, Monkey Shoulder, which is a blended malt scotch whiskey. Cheapest scot one of the cheapest scotch you can find out there that's actually worth a darn. <clears throat> All right. So this again being the semifinal round, I'm not gonna go into it in depth. Whoever makes it to the finals gets a full review. Both both finalists get a full review before I announce the winner. So here we go. Start with repeal batch. <coughs> Swallowed some water weird earlier and it's still affecting my throat. Mm. Got that Jim Beam peanut butter. I can get my nose in it. It's kind of weak. Hmm. It's classic Jim Beam on the nose, really. Little, maybe a little more. Uh, what's the word I can use here? A little nuttier, a little more pe like peanut butter on the nose with, than your classic Jim Beam, but it is what it is. Let me reset my nose. Okay. Mmm, butterscotch. Sweet butterscotch. Malty, malty. Classic scotch notes. I mean, it's complex for its price, but it's not over complex, but neither is this, so. This is going to be hard to choose because I already know I like both of these and they're completely different types of whiskeys, obviously. We got a bourbon <clears throat> and a scotch. So it's hard. It's going to be hard to compare. I'm going to try, try my hardest here. Mm. It's just so good. It's like Nutter Butters. One of my favorite sandwich cookies. I like them better than Oreos, actually. Mm. Mm. Now, this might actually be the real championship round. Next round just says, because <clears throat> Evan Williams, I made it through. It was really good. I'm not gonna, that's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna give it its fair comparison. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They're both so good. <laughs> this is like This is what I imagine going to Old Saloon Old West tastes like. The the bourbon you get there, kind of raw, but not like not young and cheap, but kind of just raw and is what it is, accepting of what it is. This seems a little more refined, more like you're going to a nice dinner with your grandparents. The butterscotch, like the butterscotch candies that my grandparents always had. <clears throat> Feel like I need to have my pinky up to drink this one, but it's it's really good. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel wrong drinking the Jim Bean out of a Glen Karen. I feel like I should be drinking it out of a <coughs> rocks glass or a mug or I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I made my decision. <coughs> to me, these are both equally good in taste in the nose, completely different, but equally good. What's making my decision, so I'm going back and forth. 
This is more readily available as because because the repeal batch being is a special edition and won't be around forever. But the repeal batch is like six, 15 16 dollars where this is 27 30 all day so this beats it on the price by a long shot but this one beats it on the availability or at least the future availability uh, but it's bottom shelf bracket battle it's not about it's not about how common it is it's about it's about the price it's about the the golden bricks on the bottom shelf that Bernie Lovers always talks about. With that being said, I think Monkey Shoulders hit the end of the road. Sorry, old friend. Jim Beam Repeal Batch Kentucky Street Bourbon Whiskey at 43% ABV, limited edition, prohibition, $17, makes it to the finals. So congratulations to that. I'm going to take a break for a couple hours, let my palate reset, um, and come back and try this, film this last round. So you'll see it in this video. Cheers. All right, guys, we made it. We're here at the final round, the final match of the 2019 Bourbon and College bottom, bottom shelf bracket battle. So our contestants today, as you've just seen, are... Evan Williams, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey at 40% ABV, 43% ABV, excuse me. And Jim Beam Repeal Bash and Non-Chill Filtered Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. And it is also 43% ABV. This one just barely beat out the underdog monkey shoulder. This one beat Crown Royal. So they both beat international competitors here, both from Kentucky both bourbons, both obviously American. And the show is bourbon in college, so it's kind of fitting. Before we get to this though, I'm gonna do a full review of each of them. Before we get to that, do a little uh, housekeeping and uh, shameless plugging. So obviously, if you uh, aren't a follower already, you should go follow me on Instagram at bourbon underscore in underscore college. Go follow me on Twitter at in bourbon. I have a Facebook page. Go to my website, bourboncollege.com. I just opened up a shop on there. So you can get you can get a bourbon and college coaster. I have a few other bourbon and college labeled things. I am also going to be selling these bourbon and college Glen Karens. As soon as I get them in, I'll let you know. And uh you can buy one of these. These are awesome. These beautiful. Um found a, a great reliable maker on Etsy and he's does great work. So there's that. Um, other than that, like and subscribe, like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm gonna be doing this every year and we do cool videos like this. I have at least one video a week. Just did a top five, go check that out. Top five bourbons under $50. Okay, all the housekeeping out the way. Let's get started. So I'm gonna do these one at a time. Give a full review of one, then switch and do a full review of the other, and then compare them A, B, and give you a final answer. So let's start with our round, our match one, round two winner, Evan Williams. We're gonna pour this one into the bourbon and college glass. Now this is my brand new whiskey vault, Glen Karen. I got from the guys at the whiskey vault. They are awesome. Go check out their YouTube channel, The Whiskey Vault, and also The Whiskey Tribe. That's how I learned about whiskey, honestly, it's through them. Check them out. Join their Patreon, join my Patreon. You know, spread the love. All right. So, Evan Williams on the nose. Sweet, sweet vanilla and caramel. It's one of those it's the smell you get when you think of bourbon if you're not if you're not into bourbon. It's kind of your classic whiskey. It's at least for me, it's what I think of when I think whiskey. It's the smell I think of. <clears throat> or when you're drinking it in a Coke. Mm. 
Mm. It's sweet, it's easy. That 43% makes it a real easy drinker. And the taste helps. It tastes really good too. So combination of those both, top notch. Very good. As far as tasting notes, I get sweet. Not cloyingly sweet, but sweet. Sweet as in a vanilla or caramel candy. Not like vanilla extract or extract, excuse me. Like kind of like a creamy caramel candy with a little bit of vanilla in it. Nothing special. There's no like lemon or whatever that you get out of some bourbons. It's it's a one noted candy. But it's good. Of course, I left my coasters out, so I can't cover this, but it'll be okay for a second. Now let's get to the Jim Bean. I'm not very good at pouring. Okay. Oh, night and day on the nose. This is very nutty. Nutter butter almost. If there was a peanut flavored, peanut, peanut butter flavored chewy candy, or like maybe like someone put a little bit of peanut butter in caramel candy, because caramel is the dominant note, whereas there's caramel vanilla on the Evan Williams. This is nut, nuttiness is the dominant note, but between vanilla and caramel, I get mainly caramel here. Mm. Sweet, longer, more oaky finish. Mm. More complex, there's more layers to it. Cause yeah, there's the nuttiness on the taste. Yeah, there's the caramel I talked about. But the vanilla note comes in a lot stronger and a lot more separate on the taste than it does on the nose. And then you get some oakiness too. It's almost, it's got a, a thicker, more viscous mouthfeel to it. <clears throat> mm. It's definitely more interesting. Do I enjoy it better? I don't know. Mmm. Going back to the Evan Williams. Not any, like I said, not complex. It's almost like someone watered down a, uh, a bourbon, like a uh, Henry McKenna bottle and bond, but way watered down to where it's dull. <clears throat> I get a dough, like a, you know, like a biscuit dough. Like a sweet, well, maybe more like a cinnamon roll dough. On the nose, a little bit of flour. Flour is the powder, not the the plant. Definitely a lot sweeter on the Evan Williams. This is more rounded, natural sweetness, whereas this is sugar sweet. Oh, this is hard. Hmm. All right. Before I decide while I'm thinking it over, get my ratings. So <coughs> I'm gonna leave Evan Williams as a cocktail. Now, don't take these two different ratings as which one I think wins necessarily. I want Evan Williams as a cocktail because it's your classic bourbon and Coke bourbon. It's, it's got enough oomph to it that it'll stand out in a Coke, but not in, it's 
not enough to to dominate it. It'll complement a Coke. It's sweet, uh, but I don't think sweet on sweet would be too bad. Now this one, I put it a keep just because of the um, the limited edition of it. It's good. Definitely want to keep it around, and I would probably drink this neat or on the rocks as compared to in a cocktail and Coke because just because of the flavor. It's not sweet. It's not going to complement it in my opinion. Um, so, I mean, I guess in that ranking sense, technically this is ranked above it, but they're there for different reasons. Does that make sense? All right, guys. So I have here my winner in this class. Mm, definitely. So let me walk you through my process here. They're both the same price. They, I got them for the same price, same amount, same ABV. So they're all even on that level. I find it funny that two of the cheapest also made to the final. So, <sighs> so it really came down to the nose, the taste, and the finish for me. Because they're both good in their own ways, for sure. Like I said, this would be good as a mixer. This would be good on rocks or by itself. This would be this is good by itself too. I don't know who I'm kidding, but they're both going to be staying around in my collection as long as I can, at least. Hmm. Now I don't want you to think that just because this the one that was in this glass earlier is the winner because it's the new glass and I poured me another pour <laughs> of it. Um, so don't be like, oh, you found out what it was. Um, so let's go one by one. On the nose, I give it to Evan Williams. It's a little more complex. It's sweet. It's pleasant. Not that this one isn't pleasant on the nose. It's just all I get is nut or butter and a little bit of caramel. This has some vanilla and caramel. It tastes like, it smells like a candy. On the taste, had to give it to Jim Bean. It, uh, more complex on the taste. Just like I said, the nose is more complex than the Evan Williams. This is way more complex on the taste. Jim Beam had the nuttiness, yes. The caramel, yes. The vanilla, yes. But the va vanilla stood out a lot more than in the Evan Williams. There was nuttiness, there was caramel, and there was vanilla. Whereas in Evan Williams, there was just caramel vanilla mixed together. This has the layers. So on the taste, get that. So that leaves the finish. Now, they both have your classic bourbon finishes. Jim Beam. Jim Beam had the better finish, the longer finish, the one that actually stood out to me. That means that Jim Beam repeal batch, non-chill filter Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, 40 Three percent alcohol by volume, eighty-six proof, is your best of the bottom. It is your twenty nineteen bottom shelf bracket battle champion. For seventeen dollars, go pick you up a case of this. It's awesome. It's cheap, and it's not going to be around 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 forever. Evan Williams, awesome. Go pick you up a whole case of this too, but you don't do it at the same time because it's always going to be around. It's just a good go-to. Congratulations to Jim Bean. Thank you all for watching. Go check out Instagram, my Twitter. Go check out my new shop on my website. It's awesome. Pick, get you some nice glasses. Everything is made to order. So I make it. If you get a coaster, if you get a custom logo coaster, I get you to send me the logo. I design it on the computer. I'll send it to you to approve it before anything happens. And then I send it, send you the actual product. So check that out. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to this channel. Congratulations, Jim Beam, and cheers.